I'm saying something with the mic? Is the mic working? Okay, it seems to be working. Seems to be working. Something is moving. Okay, well, if it's moving, it means then it works. Okay. <clears throat> so, shall we start? Because I know I you start. have your other appointment. Yeah, don't worry. Okay, when you were a teenager, you thought about acting. Is that the first time you thought about acting? Oh, I, I've been thinking about acting since I was probably like 14 or 15. Right. So yeah, I've been thinking about it for a long time. And did you ever like see a particular film and you looked on the screen and you thought, oh, I could do that or an epiphany somehow? I don't think it was ever about one movie or one um, actress or one thing. But, like I remember, um, I remember watching like American Beauty, and that was I had a blast watching that because I watched it when I was a teenager, like young, young. and then all of the Kubrick films. That was really like intense for me, even though he doesn't have many female characters, but it was really strong. But I don't, I can't. Maybe, maybe like. When I watched for the first time uh, Eternal uh, uh, Sunshine of the Spotless Mind from Michel Gondry, I thought Kate, Kate Winstead was really, like, really amazing. Have you met Michel Gondry? No. Never met but him. It would be great. Yeah, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any... Um, a friend of mine, Loane, did music for one of his films. Oh, really? A very close friend. Okay. Um, but I never met him. Was there any particular actor or actress that you really get inspired by? Yeah, probably Tilda Swinton. Yeah, she's probably the main one. But then uh, Kate Benchel and uh, Kate Winslet again, probably. Yeah, but Tilda Swinton is the, the biggest inspiration for many things because she can, she, she can play anything, she can do anything. So. Did you meet her at Cannes? Yeah. So how was that? Ooh, that was really uh, emotional for me because like, I saw her and I was like, oh my God, she exists. You know, she's, she's an actual person because you know, like, she also has this thing where she, she, she looks like a goddess, basically, so I was like, oh my god. So I went to see her, and I was really shy, I was like, oh, hi, I'm sorry. And she was so friendly, and she was so nice, she was like, oh dude, that's amazing, congratulations to you. And uh, she gave me her phone number, and we texted a little bit, and it was just really normal, and really nice. And I mean, the fact that she's even better in person, and so nice and friendly, made her even more like, hi, in my heart. Wow, that's yeah. great. I yeah. can picture a friendship there. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, was, she was so nice. So when you got cast for the film, mm -hmm. it was through Instagram. Yeah. Was that the first time something like that came to you through Instagram? I mean, I, ha I got a lot of jobs from Instagram, but as a model or like for short movies or you know, music videos. But I got like most of the jobs that I did in my life. I got them through social media in general. Even even when I worked as a photographer, it was like mainly through Instagram and social. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it was the first time I was cast ever for a feature film. So yeah. Because your first film was Sank Vague uh, Lavender. Yeah, but that was just like that was just, just a tiny short movie. Right. And then I mean, I did like a bunch of tiny short movies that we don't really know about. But whatever. And uh, because before that I was in drama class, I was doing like drama class, and I did like short movies with you know students from the Femis and uh, stuff like that. But I don't I don't even know where this, those things are. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I read that you had four auditions. Yeah. So what was? I would take me through it because what was the first audition like? Because your your acting is your dialogue is your body. Mm -mm -mm -mm. True. I mean, in the first version of the scenario, there, were, there was way more scenes where I had to talk. So the first, my, the first round of audition was uh, just a scene, like written down, and I had like to say stuff, and it was like pretty, like just it was just a scene, and it was just with the casting director at that at that point. And then the second round, which scene was it? It was a scene that got cut from. Okay. Yeah. 
No, I mean, basically nothing that I did auditioning happened in the movie, so... Um, the second round was, was with uh, Julia, director, and the casting director, and uh, this time it was still the same scene plus another scene, which was pretty, like, normal. Third round was with uh, Garance, Marie, who was there to, uh, to be, like, the other character. So we, yeah, so same, we, we went through some scenes and uh, tried stuff and uh, basically I think the director wanted to see if I could you know, take, uh, um, you know, understand what she was saying, what she was saying and just try to take it into account in the way I was playing. Um, and the last one, uh, the last one was a bit more special because it was just with the, the director and the casting director. And I went for a coffee with the director for like a good maybe 45 minutes, uh, where I basically it felt like a, a job in it, you know. Like I before going to this thing, I bonjour, je vais vous prendre un jus carotte Before going to this thing, I had written a letter to her just in case, you know, the thing didn't go as well as I wished or whatever and I had this letter in my pocket and I basically during this coffee thing I basically told her everything that was in my letter and it really felt like a job interview like, this is why you should hire me for this thing so this and then we went into the rehearsal room and uh, and we this this one was a bit more like the film because it was more like physical she like we she she did this thing where she she hit like most of my face but the eyes and i had to do the whole scene with my eyes only just like trying to like pass emotions or whatever like stuff through the eyes only that was really interesting to do and also there was the, another scene when i was where i was supposed to like uh, to play extreme suffering on the floor um but I mean, if you've seen the movie, you know why. <laughs> so the suffering worked. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it worked. I, I went very far. Like, I I kind of blacked out. Like, after this thing, I I was kind of like... It felt like a trance. Like, I left and I was just like... But it was good. I mean, that was what I had to do, apparently. So. And what were the key points you told her in the letter? One was Andrade. Uh, the key points... Uh, it was like... Uh, basically, what I said was um, that I, was a I felt that he made. <laughs> yes. I mean, it felt like I, I that everything made sense to me, like the little things that I knew about the scenario and the way she was working and the fact that she was a woman and many things made a lot of sense to me because my whole life, like about gender and stuff, like my whole life, I've been mistaken for a boy, like over and over again like since I'm very very small and um, which is a good feeling in a way it's kind of I mean of when, you, when you're young you're like come yeah. on <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> but I mean yeah I mean now I don't I don't give a fuck anymore but it took me a while and I was angry at that for a long time but you know about this gender thing that I know how to play with very easily like I can you know I, I can my posture can change like I'm really this is really easy for me and it's been part of my life, anyways. Uh, about like the very physical aspect of the movie, because like I, I exercise a lot, like I do sports all the time. So I was basically ready to go through this like huge training that we <laughs> that I went through, and uh, and also the fact that she was like, we were almost the same age, we went through the same um, like we did the same things in school, um, and uh, mainly because she did the femis, I didn't, but you know before that studied like literature and uh, English and stuff like that and also like very like we had a lot of um, common we have a huge common ground that we that I felt was worth exploring together and the training I mean God you're amazing I mean my friend and I were seeing it together we were like yeah the training was it was intense because it was I had, I had this uh, coach for like just like fitness and you know because I had to lose like so much weight um, I mean so much fat basically but, um, <laughs> which is not fun <laughs> at all Never but uh, so I had to lose fat 
I wasn't fat, but you know, yeah. more fat. And um, so I had a coach for this, and I had also like this, I had dance classes with this amazing pole dancer, who's called Do uh, Doris Arnold, who's like the queen of pole dance, and the queen of sexy, you name it, whatever, sexy everything. And um, so I had her twice a week, and the other one twice a week, and uh, we would basically stretch, <laughs> take my legs and stretch them. And yeah, she taught me how to like be sexy basically because I had no idea. You know, I was like, <laughs> you really quite... pulled it off. <laughs> Thank you. But it was so much work because I, I never really felt comfortable with the side of my, of my femininity. Like it was never something I really like, explored. I really, I did, never really felt really comfortable with that. And now I felt really comfortable. I could work anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big twerker now. How? <laughs> <laughs> How long was the training? Like it was two, three months. Two, three months. Two months. Wow. Yeah, that was intense. But that was that was also really nice to do because it keeps you in a very good shape. I was hungry most of the time, but <laughs> it was working very well. What were you able to eat? I mean, I, I could eat, but I was not really supposed to eat um, dinner, which I did anyways because I would have died. So I I wasn't supposed to eat like basically carbs just get rid of carbs and uh, fat and sugar which doesn't give you that many options left because I'm a vegetarian on top right. of everything so it was kind of like very intense but it worked and um, and I mean yeah I mean I feel like what's what, what you can see in the movies like, that's this that's what the director wanted so yeah, that, that works at what point did you meet Vincent uh, pretty early on I met him during while we were prepping for the movie, uh, we organized an apéro with the director and him, and we got along. Instantly, it was really good. Yeah, because it's like we both like kind of like when we meet new people, really social and really like it's really easy with us. But it's we also act like animals a little bit, like <laughs> trying to you know see who you have in front of you and just trying to. But it worked really well. Like we we got along really well, and on set he was. Honestly, was the best person for me to start in this industry. And the preparation—it was like six hours of prosthetics and makeup, or what? Yeah. Uh, um, so that was that was just one week. I mean, I had a minimum of two or three hours of makeup every day because I had the scar all the time. I had the scar all the time. So this this took like an hour and a half to two hours, and then I had maybe some stuff in my face. But then you know it keeps on going, and then you have the belly and the and the breasts and the, and the nose and the things under the eye and the thing to hide the, the eyebrows and everything and uh, and the makeup because you have to do all the lacquer and stuff. So there was this one week where I had six hours in the morning, so I would I had I had to arrive in the dressing room at what five with the makeup artist like five in the morning, and then we would. Uh, start shooting at 11 and then end of the day at 10 or 11 p.m. and then remove everything all in all I had four hours of sleep for a week but I mean wow. it was just a week so that was that was okay it was really tiring but it was like I knew it was gonna be this kind of long days and very heavy schedule so. but how long was the shoot in total two months two months mm -hmm. That, yeah, that was like very intense. We did like extremely long days. So. But I mean, it was also kind of good because you know, as a team, mm -hmm. you know, the endeavor was a general ende endeavor. Like everyone was in pain, <laughs> so it was kind of like everyone <laughs> was tired. And everyone was like, yes, and and because everyone's so tired, you have to like find the energy to you know. So that was a very beautiful like collective experience on that on that, on that level. Because people were very, very, very kind, very, very like, protective, very, very... I was really lucky to work with like this um, hair and makeup team, the SFX team, and, um, and everyone basically, even like the stylist, like everyone was like, very, very sweet to me and very like, trying to cozy me up all the time, so that was really sweet. Now, about studying psychopaths and serial killers. <laughs> that yeah. kind of fascinates me. 
it's always sort of fascinating me. Like what kind of, you watched a lot of films, did yeah. any of them in particular stand out? Hmm. Mm. I watched so much, so much, so many like documentaries and so many interviews. I don't think there's one thing on YouTube I haven't seen about swimming killers. I haven't watched everything, and I'm watching a new one right now. What I is found it? A new one. It's about this guy Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. Like he killed like many people and he buried them under his house, like young boys because like. He's not a homosexual, but you know, it's kind of pedophile. Yes, loving. From but what country? America. Oh, U.S. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> yes. Did you? Did you find? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you find most of them were from America? Yeah. I mean. Well, there's a certain amount in Belgium too. No? Belgium is great. Yeah, Belgium is great for that. But I mean, the U.S. I mean, it's like another level. But no, I loved like the story of uh, Eileen Murnos, uh, Wernos, who inspired the, the movie Monster. Oh, Sh right. Charlize Theron. Yeah, she was yeah, great. She, she, yeah, I mean, Charlize Theron was crazy good. But also like this character, she's, a, she's like, it was really interesting to work on, um, on her, on the way she was, you know, behaving and the, I mean, the, they all have, like all of those serial killers have in common that, you know, they can, they can change their expression on their faces, but their eyes, it never, like nothing, like, there's nothing, it's blank all the time. Even though the expression is changing, changing on their faces and they can do many things and express different things, there's nothing in the eyes. If you watch like interviews of uh, Ed Kemper or Ted Bundy or whoever, it doesn't move, it's crazy. It's like blank, empty, there's nothing. So I worked on that a lot. And also watched the uh, re rewatched. Uh, we need to talk about Kevin. I love that. Yeah, it's, yeah. This is a movie that I really loved before, but I rewatched it. And what uh, is Ezra Miller does in that was really inspiring. Also, the um, I watched the uh, Killing Eve while I, while I was preparing, and what uh, Jodie Comer, Comer does as Villanelle um, in Killing Eve was really, really, really inspiring. And what do you think the difference between because you studied psychopaths also right I didn't really study I mean I didn't study in school but I, I, I read everything that I could that I could read about them yeah because I it's like normally as a serial killer also a psychopath so they go yeah, hand in hand yeah it's better I mean if you're a serial killer it's better for you if you're a psychopath because otherwise you just have a very bad time because as a psychopath, you don't feel any emotions. Like you don't have empathy for anyone. Like you don't have feelings. It's just like you just reply to bullshit. And like first, like first serial killers is like death or rape or whatever. But I mean, you know, there's there are a serial killers um, in like. The financial world, like it's just, ev I mean, you know, psychopaths are just everywhere. It's just, they're, they're all the sociopaths. Like there's a lot of them, like probably here, but psychopaths is just, they're just a little bit more dangerous because they have like a psychosis. So it's like a little bit. I read something that one out of five, like either in politics or in business, are psychopaths. Yeah. That's a yeah. pretty large number. Yes, that's a lot. But I'm not. I'm not surprised. Like it's. I mean, if you read like what a psychopath is, is you could just be normal. You know, psychopaths are dangerous if they have like a death culture or like if they want to rape people or like if they if they want to destroy stuff. But they, being a psychopath doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna destroy anything. It just means that you have no. Empathy. Empathy. So, so what's really interesting with those people is like they, because they have no empathy, they have no emotions, they don't know how to react, you know, like to the world, to, to what's happening. So they learn as they go. So, for instance, if they go to a funeral, they're gonna learn that people are sad and they cry there. So they're gonna cry or fake crying there. If there's a birthday or good news and people, everyone's super happy, they're gonna understand that oh, birthday happy, yes, and they're gonna be happy, like fake happiness. Which is really interesting, and they're usually really clever people. Goes hand in hand. And actors at heart, I guess. 
I mean, if they can see, okay, this is what pain feels like. Yeah. So when you were when you were on your killing spree in the film, which was incredible, <laughs> incredible. I mean, I have some of my favorite moments, like one with the black guy. Oh yeah, that, that was, was really. So he's so he's so cute. <laughs> he's really sweet. That, that was, was really sweet. So good. It was like the scene when you cracked your. Oh, that was another one. Like hard Which to one? watch. When you, it wasn't killing. It was when you were remodeling your face. Breaking the nose in the sink. Ah, oh, the nose breaking God. was tough. That was intense. Yeah, I mean, even I couldn't watch it. <laughs> it yeah, was really it was hard. like Marco was like. This. Oh no! Yeah. I was like glued to it. It was like oh, mm -hmm. that was intense. Yeah, very intense. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah. So, I read somewhere that Julia found the film optimistic, and I thought, like, okay, how? What was your reaction to that? Is it because, at the end, we sort of saw some sort of emotion towards the Van Sant character? Uh, I mean, it's it's. If it's optimistic in any ways, it's probably in the fact that it's not because you've never been able to love, or never been loved before that it will happen to you at some point. That's probably where it's the most uh, optimistic. Other than that, I don't see it, I swear. <laughs> but that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Like, thinking that in the case of Vincent, you can't love anymore, and there's no one to love you anymore. And in the case of Alexia, um, she's never been loved by her dad or her mom. And she was never able to love because she's, she's a psychopath. And she and they happen together. They happen to find love again or discover love. So that's the op optimistic thing about about the movie is that it's not because you never experienced love that it's not going to come your way uh, one way or another. Hopefully without getting pregnant from a car. But that was yeah. also that was great. I, it was Spike Lee made some comment like he never saw a film where. A woman was impregnated by a car. Also, I might add that she had uh, car oil coming out of. Yeah, yeah. weird period. Yeah. <laughs> oil period. Nice. <laughs> yes. So, what was it like meeting Spike Lee? I mean, to this day, I still don't really understand what happened there. I mean, Sharon Stone hugged me. Be I still, wild. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, just like, yeah, I met Spike Lee and it was, I mean, he was, we met mostly because he was just so, really sorry about the yeah, thing that he did at the ceremony. But I don't think that was really his fault. I think the way it was presented to him, it kind and I of have been drifted drift before. Up. Maybe he yeah. didn't listen. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe. But I mean, it never happened before, so yeah. it was just probably but then, about. Yeah. It's okay, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm really happy with what happened. Yeah, so what, it took a little of the suspense away, but... It's okay. I mean, most of the people didn't really hear about it, and even us, we thought we heard. But you, you, you can't start the ceremony being like, oh yes, we won, it's not possible, because otherwise, like, it's yeah. just hell. So yeah. We're just waiting, 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 and yeah. No, it's true. It was, it was pretty wild, I thought. Yeah. But I mean, far from that, like, yeah, Spikey was really, really nice and really kind. Everyone was really nice. Like, yeah. um, I'm really happy I didn't meet anyone I admired and, you know, was kind of like disappointed about them. That's also rare, no? Cause yeah, usually... because they say you never meet your idols, but I'm really happy because I met a lot of them in Cannes and I was just like stunned because they were all super nice people. So you didn't have an agent when you started the film, mm -hmm. now you have one. Yeah, I got an agent when I got the film because you, had, you need someone to negotiate your contract. Ah, okay. To, so like, do the paperwork the and stuff. So that's, yeah, that's how... I mean, the, the day I got... Um, I knew I got the part, I went to the production, and then... I went to production, and then the casting director, like, helped me find, like, an agent, and that's how, like, yeah. So now I have an agent, yeah. And now, how has it been since? I mean, you start your first lead role, and you have a standing ovation <laughs> in the Palais du Festival in Cannes. I, I mean... <laughs> What comes next? I mean, what? I don't know. I have no idea. You like, tell me. I don't know what's coming next. Like I, I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to travel a little bit in September for the promo because the movie is going out in the U.S. in October first. 
October. Oh, it's um, the first of October. Yeah. That's so, gonna be wild with, you know, that's going to be wild. Where yeah. is the first screening? Are you at the I'm not New sure. York Film Festival? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, yes. Yeah. Maybe, I'm going, to, I'm going to be in New York uh, from September 25th till the 29th. So probably that time. Yeah, because yeah. that's when the, because a friend of mine, Eugene, Eugene Hernandez, is mm -hmm. the director of oh, okay. the New York Film awesome. Festival. He's great. But He's the sweetest guy. I don't know if you're competing in this festival. I actually have no idea. I think it I is. Come probably. to think of it, because I saw the schedule. Mm. I'm going to mention Ooh, okay. something. Because sometimes it's just a screening yeah. and it's not in competition. But I, no, I think I, I saw it. I, okay. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm not positive. So, well, so he's going to be traveling and uh, promo and uh, auditioning for stuff in the middle. That's great. Yeah. Auditioning for what? Well, it's secrets. So offers are coming, obviously. I mean, you are yeah, like... Not, it's not like... It's not, it's, not like uh, it's not that huge. I mean, it's only September 1st. It was also... <laughs> I mean, also can this year happen, like end of July? July and then yeah. August is canceled here. So of it's course. Like, uh, but I have, the, yeah, I have like things coming up right now. Just need to, yeah, to get an audition and win it. It's great. And I was like, I only saw two films with you, the Saint Val, yeah, yeah, Lavenir, and and this one, and both of them were um, practically silent. Yep. How is that as an actress? It must be much, even a, more difficult. It's kind of. It's just, it's just a different kind of work, but it's interesting to work with your body and trying to because it's not even you know it's not even uh, theater you know what you have people live you know and you can feel stuff it's like a screen so it's you have to use your body in a way that it's not too obvious you know not to be too clowny and uh, trying to do that but it's really interesting there it's, was nothing clowny about your performance <laughs> but uh, it's also kind of like frustrating in a way I mean in Titan I had like like, it had dialogue uh, scenes, but it got cut. But I had like, I mean, I had scenes like, like that, but it got cut. But so, I mean, working with your body is like really interesting and really um, challenging for many reasons. But it's also kind of frustrating, just because as an actress, you kind of want to show kind of everything you can do and uh, talking is one of them. <laughs> but I mean, it's okay. I mean, I'm happy I started with this, and you know, maybe like on the next one, I'm trying to talk more. Would you ever think, you know, because the movement of your body is so big, do you ever think of doing like a musical? I would love to do a musical. I need to take like, singing lessons, but yeah, I would love that. Yeah, because I flashed on that. I, I would was love that. Thinking. I would love that. It's so good. And yeah, and I saw Annette like before, yeah, before coming, and I thought it was absolutely genius. Yeah, and I saw that, it was like, oh. Yes, that was great. I loved yeah. it. It was so beautiful. So, so yeah, beautiful. both Titan and Annette with the strange child. Yeah, that was really strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's True. a tendance, I yeah. guess. We did it. Yeah, that was really funny. So, again, like, you had the most amazing beginning. What's your dream now? I mean, you sort of, most people would dream of that like 10 years um, into their My career. dream now is just to keep on doing that job for a long time. Just that. Just because, you know, like you go to Cannes and you get su successful with one thing, but truth is, is I only done one movie. And I'm, yeah. One unforgettable movie. Yes, but you know, like I don't want to be this kind of actress who like you remember like for this one role and sure. not for a career. So like I, now my dream is to kind of establish a career and work with um, great people, kind people, um, and you know, get better at it, probably. Who are your dream director? I uh, know, end with this. Who would be your dream director outside of Julia, of course? Uh, David Fincher. Yeah. Great, so you have to tell your agent you want to... Oh, he knows. I oh, know. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Fincher is he's shooting in Paris in November. I've been like all over my agent. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, he's, he, I think he's casting everything in LA. So, I'm not in LA. 
but um, yeah, it's been true, yes. On your trip to the States with the um, launch of the film in America, do you go to LA also? No, I was supposed to go, but I'm not going after, after all, which is not that bad because then I'm gonna have to go to London and I'm happy to just, you know, be in Paris, audition for stuff, having time to basically do my job. Right. Because I'm happy to do the promo and I'm super happy to go to the US because I, I want to work in the US at some point, so I'm, I'm really happy to do that. But I'm, I also want to you know, keep some time uh, to, be, to be here and available to do like meetings and auditions and stuff like that so I can figure out what the next uh, six months are going to be about. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Okay.